Uh, welcome to the digital scene here at the Synergy event. You just presented. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your innovation. Yeah, so, um, I work as a director of photography and a lot of times on the shows that I've been shooting, uh, if we want a special look to be built in camera into the show, um, it's tougher and tougher for me recently to find specialty lenses for that. Um, specifically, the toy camera lenses. I trained as a still photographer. And a lot of the um, images I would take as a still photographer, I wanted something that was more nostalgic and react really interestingly to light and flare, I'd shoot with a Holga, which is a lens that is, um, and the lens on the hold, I should say, is made of plastic elements. So what my um, invention is, what I'm trying to fabricate is a set of, a new set of prime lenses designed in a Panavision or PL mount for either film or HD applications that will be made of uh, plastic elements but housed in a fully functioning barrel that's common with all the systems that are out there. So it can be used at fall focus gears, you can set a true T-stop, um, you can use it with all remote systems. Now what's the positives of, of having it in plastic versus in, in high quality glass? Are we talking cost? Well, sure, it's going to be a little less expensive to make, that's for sure. Plastic is cheaper than high quality ground glass. Sure. Um, but the advantage of plastic is, is, is just that. I'm trying to actually go for a degraded look. I'm not trying to find the sharpest glass in the world. So the uh, advantage on top of that with plastic though is that it is cheap to fabricate and if it scratches or you don't like it or if you want to break it, if you want to do something with some of those elements, it's not the end of the world. It's not a hundred thousand dollar lens sure. there. It's a less expensive. Well since you brought up price, what are we talking about cost wise? What, what do you see it as a retail or street price? That's a good question. I don't know yet because I'm just in the stages of I've filed for a provisional patent. I have that but I haven't fabricated Well what are you yet. shooting for? In other words, what so I'd be shooting for? Wow, that's a very good question. I'd probably say each um, lens. Um, we're not going to hold you to this. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I would say maybe each lens should be um, four hundred dollars. Okay, like that, so definitely so a set of six could be three thousand dollars, as opposed to thirty thousand dollars. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And the quality would be comparable to the thirty thousand. Is that what you're shooting? No, I'm not. I'm not at all trying to compare okay. to a set of Zeiss Ultra Primes or a set of uh, Panavision Primos. I'm trying to go the opposite way. Actually, I'm trying to create something that's uniquely soft. That when sunlight hits it or a light hits the plastic elements, it flares in an abnormal way. It's it's a special so it's lens. A, it's a special effect. Yeah, it's a special lens effect. If you've got a shot in a movie that really calls for something a little more nostalgic, and you feel like Cook Speed Pancros, which are older, softer lenses by Cook manufacturers years ago just aren't soft enough or they just don't look the same way. Today's motion picture film stocks are so sharp, HD so sharp, everything's so perfect that you want to really put something on this thing and degrade that image in camera in front of that film plane or digital chip. This is the way to do it. I see. And so who would you consider your target market? I mean, are you going after the big studios or are you going after maybe the independent filmmakers? Or? I'd, like, I'd like to have this tool readily available for everybody. I'd like it to be applicable for directors and directors of photography as a creative tool in their arsenal of tools, Seems that documentarians would that. use this quite a bit too. You could. Documentarians could. Um, it's it's something that commercials could use very effectively. Sure. Uh, music videos would probably love it. Um, I really think it has and, a broad And the reason spectrum. you want to do this from on the camera side versus post-production, because you could probably get some of that look in post-production, but it's, it's more it's of the same. organic feel yeah. of the camera, right? It's never the same. The, right. way, the way especially light reacts when it flares a lens is Really sure. difficult to achieve in post. Well, you get that organic feel that you don't in post production. Sure, sure. And you can, especially today, if you're shooting HD, right, so say, and you're monitoring, uh, when you put that lens on, what you see is what you're going to get. Right. Right. So you're no, there's no mistaking left, o left sure. to the end where you're, well, I don't know if we want to do this or that. Yeah. So it's really built in. So if people want to find out more information, Rob, where do they go? Uh, the best way would probably be to contact me at rob at robhower.com. Okay. So that's R O B H A U E R. I'm spelling my name. Rob at robhower.com. Fantastic. And yeah. do you have a website that they can I look do. At they this? can go to robhower.com as well. I, I work as a director of photography, so this spawned out of. Uh, my shooting a number of films where I felt like I wanted to have a I couple see. other tools. So okay. that's my website, my contact info is there as well. Fantastic, Rob. Very good to meet you. Yeah, thank you for having me.